It's September and also one of the warmest weeks that we've had this year in the UK at least. Of course it is. I have a bunch of plans for September and I am going to start sewing some of the more elaborate and scarier projects that I have on my list of projects that scare me. I still have a giant stash back here of those to get through. Yeah the year has definitely not gone according to plan and there will be a couple that I'm going to move over to next year because I just don't have the funds to buy £30 a metre silk to do them justice and they should have justice done because they're dual silks. But anyway I'm digressing. The first thing that I want to try and get done in September is my birder dirndl. <laughs> this one here specifically as you can see there is a post-it note. This was picked out for me by the very lovely Karin a good five six years ago and not only did Karin send me the Birder magazine with the style picked out she also sent me the most beautiful brown and turquoise silk the ribbon and then the little lacing doodads that I will do a close-up to show you because they are currently wrapped away in paper to keep them safe so I have everything I need to make the dirndl now I was looking on the hangout the other day uh, on Sunday having a look in the instructions and it turns out it is a dirndl dress I'm going to put in a picture for you here this one is available on the Berta style website but there's no picture for it it's number 124 and I'll list that in the description as well this is actually meant to be like a all-in-one dress and I do really love the three-tiered skirt with the broderie on glaze detailing on it but you do need 11 meters of broderie and glaze fabric to do that border detail. I think that I would get more wear out of this if it was a standalone piece, if it was a top. I have visions of me wearing it with jeans, my knee-high boots and big bishopy sleeves, very parrot-esque. I have visions of me wearing it with a white big bishopy sleeved tiered and gathered skirt and in that theme I have this fabric which is a viscose Swiss dot. I tried to show this on the hang out the other day and it did not work. Yeah you can see it's got some texture on it. I have plans this month. I'm going to be making the Bird of Dirndl and I'm going to be doing another version of the 8177. You guys really enjoyed the sew along for this and I'm going to be doing the sleeved version to go underneath of the dirndl that I'm planning with this fabric. Or waistcoat or top? I'm not sure. I think Dirndl, like Nimoway was there at the hangout on Sunday. Nimoway is from Germany. She said it doesn't look like a typical German traditional dirndl. It was very kind of like stylized. I'm going to be tweaking and hacking away at it. I'm calling it a dirndl because that's what it is in the magazine and what it's called in the magazine but I don't think what I'm going to end up with is going to be a traditional dirndl in any way shape or form but yes I want a dress to wear underneath of it and I'm going to use this fabric for it and I've always intended this this fabric to be a fitted bodice tiered skirt with big sleeves on it and I thought you know what I can hack this because I love the shape of this dress. I love the sweetheart neckline. I like that it's buttoned up but I keep going on about how we should make patterns work hard for us because they're expensive and I think I may be very wrong but I think it would be fairly easy for me to put in a waist seam take out the button front make it a zip up back dress because it already has a back seam in it add the sleeves on and then put a tiered and gathered skirt onto the waist seam that I'm going to add so it's quite a lot of pattern hacking to get to that point do I have other dresses in my pattern stash that are already there not that I can think of off the top of my head but I probably do but like I say patterns should work hard for us they are expensive whilst this sounds like a lot of pattern hacking I actually don't think it's going to be that difficult I think it's going to be one of those ones that it's like we can do this so that's what I'm going to attempt it will also mean that I can fully line the bodice and this fabric whilst not see-through is semi sheer and I love the idea of having a fully lined bodice that is not see-through whatsoever so I might have to interline it and line it in cotton lawn so that you can't see any of the kind of like fabric seam allowance inside of the bodice if I'm going to put a tiered and gathered skirt on that means a half circle skirt underneath of that but then the sleeves can be one layer I think I think they do have elastic channels on them so the other thing that I'm kind of contemplating maybe is actually putting on the strap and having the sleeve be sewn into the strap 
so gathered in rather than elasticated i don't know we will play around with it but that's what i'm thinking for this fabric i do also have some of this which i ordered from the textile center the textile center is open again my poor bank balance is very upset but i've ordered eight meters of this red zebra print because i want to do the standard dress with the long sleeves this one although i'm going to make it not maxi length but kind of mid axi length midi length mid axi i love how we come up with new terms for everything but yeah you guys wanted to sew along for the sleeves the traditional way of putting the sleeves in so i'm going to do that as well and i ordered eight meters of it because i want to make a 9345 shirt with giant sleeves to go with the red trousers and red waistcoat that i will hopefully be making at some point as well anyway back to the dandel or this fabric this is amazing beautiful silk that was sent to me as a wonderful gift so of course i'm not going to make the first attempt in this but i'm going to do a muslin and then my very first attempt is going to be in this brocade that i got from one of the knitting and stitching shows it's really pretty it's got like a bronze dot all over it it's kind of old champagne gold with a light duck egg blue and they are actually in the shape of eggs actually now that i've looked at it my duck egg brocade i really really like this i have bought a lot of this i think i was planning on making a coat with it the dandel is actually not that large so i'm hoping that i might have enough left to do something else with this afterwards as well it might be a good candidate for trying out the pencil skirted dresses that i want to try and make with some of my laces that i have and again i need obviously like a a, a a muslin so this is polyester brocade muslin fodder that i have a fairly decent chunk of so that's going to be the first attempt at the birder dandel and if i'm happy with it it will eventually be made out of this one which i'm really excited about how many projects are we up to now so one dandel one dress two dresses and a shirt I also have out here the remnants of my denim that the very lovely Claire gave me. Now I've made a skirt, waistcoat and jacket out of this, only one of which now fits me. My denim skirt is too big and quite a lot too big but I do have all these remnants so I should be able to cut out a new waistband and I am going to try and alter that skirt so that it fits me at my current weight and I'm going to alter it in such a way that I leave really big seam allowances so that if I need to I can let it out in the future which means hanging on to more of this denim so that I have the exact match to make a third waistband. I don't really like the waistband that's on it at the moment I made it an inch wide and it was a mistake I want a wider waistband so that is going to be my refashion project for this month and I need to do that because I have started my separates challenge my warm weather separates challenge I did this back in November December last year and I kind of enjoyed the process it was kind of fun I did like challenging myself but I couldn't wear things like this because it was the middle of winter and it was cold so I'm glad that September has decided to be our summer this year because I have warm weather to wear some of my warm weather separates in which is awesome the thing that I am missing is a denim skirt because all of my denim skirts in every color that I had are all too big for me the 1743 ones I think I have that number right. Those ones are more problematic to make smaller because it's not just a case of taking in the side seams because of how the pocket is sewn in and the opening of the pocket. Taking the pockets off and moving them over is not as simple as doing just that because they are bias bound into the side seams. So I need to work out a way of neatly finishing the side of the pocket without it being in the bias binding without then making it also chunky. So at the moment those skirts are in my future proofing box but the nine three four five long denim skirt I think it's got two side seams and a back seam so I think with that one I can take all of those seams in and make it fit me now it's got no pockets in it so I don't have to worry about that like I do like pockets in things most of the time I have pockets in the skirt that I'm currently wearing today but pockets are annoying <laughs> when you want to alter things and take them in can't remember where I was I started waffling on a tangent never mind so yeah I have one two three four projects five six projects for September as well as all the things that I haven't finished in July and August but I'm not going to tell you about those again if you really want to see what I'm waffling about with those again I will link to the plans videos up here and also in the description down below lots of outstanding projects lots of cut out projects although I did get one finished last night which was very nice and I, I, I class that as my day off I came down 
down in my PJs and I sewed in my PJs and it was all glorious. No filming whatsoever. Loved it. Six proje projects in September, but most of them are fairly easy. Yeah, there's a lot of pa pattern hacking for the McCall's one, but that's an easy dress to do and I think they're easy hacks to do, so I'm not worried about those. I know I like the shirt, so that's just going to be a cut out and sew. Altering the skirt isn't going to be too problematic and I even might attempt that later today. The Durndor. That's the one I'm scared about. Never worked with birder patterns before. The instructions are misleading. Thankfully, I started, as I say, on the hangout on Sunday, and whilst it says there's a 1.5 centimeter, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance included, it's actually not included in the pattern. You have to add it, but that's what they expect you to add, but they don't say that, so it's going to be an interesting experience. Fingers crossed I end up with something amazing because I really do need to do this fabric justice, and it, it deserves to be made up because it is so, so beautiful. Uh, yeah, I've made a mess around me here. <laughs> so, which project are you looking forward to seeing made up? I am very excited about all of them. I do think the dirndl is going to be the most rewarding if I can make it work for me, but as I say, I've never worked with Berta before, so I am incredibly nervous about tracing it. Seam allowances, sizing. I've looked at the website for the sizing. It looks fairly decent. I've been told that it's quite accurate. It's going to be a very steep learning curve, but I do have a lot of bird of magazines because I do enjoy buying them so it will be nice to try and see if I can get on with these patterns and then actually start making some of the things up that I've bought. <laughs> I also think the red dress is going to be epic. So yeah, that's my plans for September. Wish me luck. I am going to 100% need it. It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. If you've enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this one here. 